So you've seen part of my kimono collection, and I thought I'd spend a little bit of time showing you how they're stored. These are some of my other pieces. They're tied together in these wonderful little parcels that I think are works of art all by themselves. And on the front of this parcel, you have information about the name of the maker, the address, a little bit about the kimono, maybe where it was worn or who wore it. And you have these lovely pictures on the front. Here's some, here's a, a picture of a, a weaver at her weaving loom. So when you open this up, you might get a glimpse of what's inside through these little windows on the front cover. And when you open it up inside, you have another set of paper wings holding everything in place. And I wanted to show you this one in particular because a little bit of information on it. We have first the obi belt and then the kimono itself. So these are stored in pairs like this. And some of them are tied with these fabric strings and some have these beautiful intricate strings made of twisted paper. And I'm not using them anymore. I'm just storing everything flat because I would be so upset if one of these broke. So here is, these are more full length kimono. And now I want to talk about a different kind of a kimono, different to these more formal garments. And that is called the happy. It's spelled H-A-P-P-I. It's a much shorter garment to the kimono, but it shares some of the same features. So you have the front band, and you have this square sleeve, and you have this vent, you have this vent here that runs along the side of the sleeve and the side seam of the garment. So I wear these when I work. They're very comfortable, they're, they're loose, and I can carry some of the smaller tools if I'm working on a particular job in this pocket. They tie together on the inside with, the st with these different ties. And I liked it so much, I decided to put it into my collection. So the first thing I wanted to do was to compare and contrast a lot of these happy and to make a pattern for them so that I could then make them up easier. Now, how do you go about making a pattern for something like this? Well, on the face of it, you'd think, well, it looks quite easy because they're more rectangular pieces. But the trickier bit is the neck and how to get that run correct in your pattern work. So I want to show you a little trick about how I go from a garment to making a flat pattern. So I'm going to move over to this side of the table. I'm going to show you the pattern and I'm going to show you a technique that I use to make a pattern from a garment. Now I'm going to show you my technique for making a pattern of all or part of a garment by pinning through the garment with a straight pin. Or you can use an awl, which might damage the garment. It all depends how, what kind of condition you want to keep your original garment in. And underneath this, I have a layer of materials. So first of all, on my table, I have a cutting mat. And then on top of that, I have four layers of domet. You can use any kind of spongy fabric, quilt batting or whatever. And then my pattern paper. Now you can, the reason this is a good idea to have a few layers underneath is because you can set your garment up very flat using these pins, making sure that the area you want to concentrate on is very flat, as flat as you can get it. Now this isn't going to be an exact copy of the pattern, but if you have a more intricate run or a fiddly shape, this will be a good way to just set it up, make your pattern and see what shape it is that you're dealing with. So now, here I have my center back seam. I've got the neck band. This curves around into the shoulder point, which on the kimono, is oftentimes a pressed line. So I don't know if you can see that. 
if I lift this up a little bit, this is the shoulder line. So if we have the center back seam and we have the shoulder line in this rectangular garment, then you can see how this is going to all set up nicely. I'm going to start at the shoulder line and I'm just going to make a set of pin marks in the line here. Then I'm going to arrange the front and I'm going to make some pin marks here. This is moving now around the shoulder line. This is the back neck curve. And then this is the center back. Right here, I'm going to make a few stabs so I know exactly where I am. And then I'm going to come down and make this straight center back seam line. So this is just part way to making a pattern, but it's a technique that I'm hoping you can see and just how this is going to work. Now, here we are. So if we connect these lines we have here, the shoulder seam, we have the center back neck point and we can now trace that line, curve that around into the front of the garment and then here is our center back. Okay. Now then you can take some tools or some squares and see how you've done. So we can then set this up, you see. Trace that off and now we've got this line. Kimono is so, such a square set of shapes. It's a very geometrical garment. So anyway, you get the picture and then you can start to using whatever, whatever pattern tools you're using and you can just start connecting everything. That's going to be more of a straight line. So there we are. So we have your, your center back here. We have your shoulder. We have your neck point. Um, and then you have your front edge. So that, that will help you a lot, uh, where most of the garment is very basic in its construction. And this is the trickier bit. And this is just an easy way of taking all or part of the garment and with a few pins and some materials underneath arriving at a pattern. So let's take a look at what a finished production pattern looks like. Um, all the pieces are here. They're all held together on this hook and I'm going to need a little bit more space so I'm just going to move this happy coat out of the way. Um, you see everything's made out of a card and you can see looking at each piece that there's a set of notches here. These um, tell us what the seam allowance is going to be. In this case, it's at a half an inch around this pocket. And also any underlying architecture that I want to put in, a facing, an interfacing, a lining. So at the top of this pocket, which is our facing, I want to put a light fuse there. The next piece that's also gonna carry a light fuse is the front band. This piece goes from the back of the neck all the way down one side to the hem and it also goes from the back neck all the way down to the other side the left side of the hem and the right side of the hem so I really need two of these to go up to the neck and then back down to the hem as you see in the in the kimono garments so it but instead of cutting two of these I'm saying Let's cut one on the fold. So I have twice the length, okay? This is just gonna save on pattern paper and it's also gonna give me a more stable shape because I'm cutting two layers of fabric and they're both together on this one piece. So that's the band taken care of. And next we have the sleeve, which you remember the shape of that curve on the bottom of the sleeve. I have a few notches here where the sleeve is opened and I have a second notch or another notch where the shoulder seam lies. So when we put the front and the back together, we know to match this notch onto the shoulder seam. And again, we have these notches here for our seam allowance going both ways. It's a half an inch consistent throughout. Now let's look finally at the front and the back. The kimonos are cut in one piece. The front and the back 
are cut in one long piece. This is our front here, and this is our back. It's upside down, so let me just turn it around. Sorry about that. But you can see this shaded area here, as I'm saying, join this to the front. That lays just like that. And here's our neck curve, which we pinned out in that last exercise. And that was very helpful, because these pieces are quite easy. But that was a little bit trickier. So instead of, again, with the front band, instead of having one very long pattern piece, I split it into two, and then I join them together when I'm cutting. But when I'm storing them, I want to save a little bit of space. So everything gets a hole punched in it at the top like this. And then the whole pattern piece is stored together. So that's our production pattern, which we made by pinning through and also having a very good look at the garment itself to arrive at most of the shape. And I hope that technique of pinning through is helpful.